Welcome to today's left brain lesson, which is all about numbers, one of my favorite topics. So of course we're going to start with some of the basics like integers and floats, depending on how much fine grain control you need. But then we're going to talk about rounding numbers up, depending on how many digits out you want things or how you're going to print them. We're going to talk about the difference between casting and coercion. So it's whether we want to change things specifically from one type to another, or it's happening automatically in the background. I'm going to show you some of the constants you can bring in, like pi or e, and then some boolean Boolean math, the thing a lot of people don't think about, but one and a zero, the true and the false, these are definitely ways that we can calculate. And then, of course, working with some random sequences, how do we get random numbers generated? And then how do we print those to a console in the way that makes sense for whatever the application or program is that we're doing? So stay tuned, stick with me, and I can make sure that you never go bald. Let's talk integers, shall we? So here's some basic integers just to review. We can have a negative 17, a 0, or 42, as long as we don't have decimal places. Uh, also, note this notation. So see, I have int 1, int 2, int 3, and I'm just using commas and then assigning them to these three. But this is just like before when we made variables, a little bit different syntax, a little more compressed. Um, but we can print them all out in the same way by just putting commas between them, and you can see that they work just fine. And we can check them to make sure they are of type integer. Okay, now let's talk float, get some of the basics. So we're going to make a couple variables here. One we're going to set to the integer 21, one to the float 3.1415. And by printing out the types, you can see that we get exactly what we were hoping for. We get an integer and a float type. But here's a good question. So how many decimal places do you think that we are going to get when we run this cell? Because we input four after the decimal, and we get four out. Okay, so Python doesn't have any problem with that level of precision. What about this? We're going to import a constant, pi, which goes on, as you all know, forever. So how many decimal places do you think it's going to print out for pi? OK, so this is going to be its normal limit. So that's the precision level that we're dealing with. Usually not a big deal, but just something to kind of keep in mind that there is different levels. And at certain times, that's way more than we want to show someone. So if you want to tell someone what pi is, 3.14 is usually good enough. So let's move on to the next topic and talk a little bit about rounding. Let's look at how we would do that. So let's make a variable, and this one has many digits after the decimal. And we can use this cool function round. And it puts in the variable and a parameter which specifies how many digits we want to round to. And then we're also going to wrap that again in this second function called type just to make sure we are still dealing with the float. So when we run this cell, we get that it's still a float, and that it's now down to just two digits, OK? Now, if you don't put any parameters into it at all, it's going to actually assume 0, and it's going to move it all the way up to an integer. And it's a different type also now. So the important thing to remember is that if you round all the way up, Python's going to try to save memory, and it's going to turn it into an integer, and it's not a float anymore. Um, also, let's talk about if you want to round in certain ways, because sometimes what they call ceiling or floor rounding makes more sense, meaning no matter where the digit is, just bring it up or bring it down. And there's a couple things we can do for that. We can import a module called math, and then we can wrap it in a function called math.seal for ceiling or math.floor for floor. And you can see it's going to round it up to 183, or sorry, 9. As you can see, it's going to round it up to 983 or down to 982. Let's talk casting. So let's make a couple toy variables here. So we have a negative float and a regular integer. And now I want to use an absolute function. Okay, So you remember from mathematics, absolute numbers are non-negative numbers. They're a distance away from something. So we can actually run a float, negative 3.14, into an absolute function and get out an absolute number, which is a cool thing that Python can do. And remember, we didn't actually make my float back into this absolute number. We just referenced it, made an absolute value, and viewed it. So when we cast our float into an integer, what do you think we're going to get? Did you guess negative 3? Because we still have the negative up there. We didn't actually overwrite it. We just displayed this. So another thing to remember is that the state of the variable it can be very different from what you're outputting on, on screen. So let's look at another casting. If you're going to take my integer and turn it into a float, my integer right now being 21, what do you think we're going to get? 21.0, right? Like it's just the same number. The other one you can kind of think of as having a 0, but it's going to take up more memory now because it's remembering more precision. 
also want to talk about complex numbers. You know, not that they really come up that much in regular life, but they are cool. And I'm sure you remember in mathematics how fun it was to, you know, use angles to solve, you know, multiplication problems. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of cool. So knowing that Python has complex ability is neat. We can actually in, in put two digits here. It's going to be where on the x-axis something is and where on the y-axis something is, the two integers here. Uh, or one float and one integer are going to give us 21 to the right and then negative 3.1415 down. You can think of J as the Y axis. So it's cool to know that it has that. And we also have hexadecimal. So, you know, in re reality, the only time hexadecimal comes up in my life is like with colors, uh, sometimes working with Photoshop, things like that. But there is a conversion because that's a base 16 system. But we can convert the number 78 to hexadecimal and get 0x, you know, 4e or whatever it is. And we can do this with any number we want. So we have a conversion and we can convert back and we can do all sorts of cool things through casting in Python. Coercion, very similar to casting, but it takes place behind the scenes without our knowledge. So a good way to think about casting is that it's explicit, it's a decision that we make. And then coercion is very similar, but it's happening implicitly. It's happening behind the scenes. Python's just making it happen so it can solve problems for you. So easy example, we have 1.0, a float, and we're gonna add it to the integer two, but after go running through the function float, which turns it into a float, and you'll see that we end up with 3.0, okay? Now, if we actually add one directly to the number two, we get the same answer. So behind the scenes, it's just saying, whoa, 1.0 can't be added to just two. I better turn two into 2.0 and then do the math. Next, let's talk constants. So a few constants that are that commonly come up are pi and Euler's number. So just so you know how you get those is by importing the math module. So once that's imported, you can run math.pi and you can get 3.14 yada yada and you can run math.e to get 2.718 yada yada yada. So that's great. Sometimes we don't have to type all these things out. We just throw in math.pi or math.e or maybe even assign that to e and you do something like that and then throughout your code you can just use e whenever you need to. So there you go. Food for thought. Let's talk Boolean math. So this is just kind of an interesting thing to have in your head that false and true also act like the numbers 0 and 1 in Python, and they can actually be used as replacements for 0 and 1. So we're going to assign a couple variables here, just f equals true, I mean f equals false, and t equals true. And you can see that we can simply just do 1 plus f, right? So f is going to be 0, so 1 plus 0 should give us 1. 1 plus true, so it should be 1 plus 1, which is going to give us 2. And then we can do 1 minus false equal 1, 1 minus true equals 0. So cool little thing we can do there with Booleans. So now let's talk about randomness. So randomness actually seems to come up a lot when I'm programming, and I wouldn't have thought it when I started. But you know, just the way the world's going, especially with like neural networks and some of the kind of cutting edge stuff that we're going to eventually get to, it's all about controlling uncertainty. It's about having a grasp on randomness. So, you know, in a super basic sense, what we can do for a random number is bring in a module called random. And I'm also going to make just a little sequence here that we're going to use in a couple cells. But if you want a random number, it's as simple as random dot random open close parentheses, right? It's a method inside of the random module. So we run that and we get, in this case, 0, 0.04 or 0 0.04, but it's always going to be a number by default between 0 and 1. And there are a whole bunch of parameters, so make sure to wrap that thing in help and uh, go Google it if you're interested in all the other ways you can generate random ranges. Um, but you can see by just running this over and over again, we're going to get a different number between 0 and 1. And one of the cool things that you can do with sequences is you can use random.choice. I find this really powerful if you want to pull something out of this sequence, like you want a random thing out of a database, or you want a random uh, item pulled out of some kind of a list or a dictionary, you can use this random.choice, and you'll see that it's going to pull out the number 6 in this case. But if we just keep running it, we get 2, we get 6 again, we get 6 again, we get 6 again, we get 4. So. It's a very cool way you can pull that out of lists using the random module. Okay, and finally, let's talk about just how you would print these things because, you know, it's not really intuitive to always see tons of numbers after the decimal. So let's just show how you might want to print this out in a way that's more human intuitive. 
So we make this float, which has a whole bunch of numbers after the decimal. But we can say in a format, in a print format, my float, and we can actually just reference it and see everything, or we can use a colon dot two f. And remember, this is different than needing to round it first and then printing the rounded number. The whole number is still there in memory. We still have all of the precision that we had before. But in a simple way, we can actually just print out that it's National Pi Day. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.